Well, you remember the activists who shared the personal details of more than 600 Jewish Australians online? Well, it turns out that one of the activists behind this list, her name is Elsa Chewett Rosenberg, now has a contract with the Australian Human Rights Commission to produce anti-racism teaching resources for primary schools. That revelation in the Australian newspaper today. Joining me to discuss Sky News host Danica DiGiorgio and commentator Jason Morrison. Hi, Welcome to you both. Jason, my issue isn't with Elsa, it's with the Australian Human Rights it Commission. Is. How can you give an anti-racism contract to someone who was part of sharing a list of Jews, 1930s yep. style, online? Because in places like the Australian Human Rights Commission and other, uh, you know, government agencies that are meant to kind of have this quasi-independence thing about them, you'd be staggered at the number of people that regular Aussies would, would count as being extremists that are, that are riddled within, either as contractors, board members, on advisory committees. I mean, a little off the topic, years ago I, I fought the New South Wales government against appointing a radical Islamist who I'd been in court with for, for, for almost a decade Mm. It kept getting government board positions. Oh, it just blows you away. This this person has fruitcake views. I know exactly who and, you're speaking yeah. about. He, he still contacts me to this day. Oh, he would. He's We're not going to say his name yeah, online. Yeah, well, he, because on he air. loves being talked about. But the, the thing about it is it roles from government board to government board, or if it's not that, yeah. it's kind of quasi-government quasi boards funded by government money. Mm. Extremists are all through government agencies, and it's it's become a resting place for them. Aussies would be shocked at how many people that they know as activists have a resting position inside mm. government authorities or funded by the taxpayer. Okay. It's amazing. Mm. It's outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous to have a government organisation. The Human Rights Commission has a lot of questions to answer here because we have a situation where taxpayers' money is going towards someone who has allegedly been involved in the doxing of Jewish Australians, mm. and we know firsthand the impact that, that this has had. I mean, we've got families who have had to go into hiding. You know this, Shari. Mm. Families have gone into hiding. They're rightfully scared because their public information has been disseminated online in a public forum, and it's absolutely appalling. And I wonder whose department, uh, government-wise, this, this lands under. But this certainly has to be investigated. Well, the Attorney-General. It must be the Attorney General's ironically, office. But ironically. It's the Attorney General's yeah. office. It's not just mm. this. I mean, Creative Australia or another government agency has been giving funding to an artist mm. who has shared anti-Semitic content online. I went and asked Tony Burke about it. It sits under his um, portfolio. Asked the agency. They're just nothing to see here, nothing to see here. They just don't care, this government, about no. anti-Semitism. No, they yeah. don't. I mean, they've, and they've said in terms yeah. of doxing, they've said, oh, we're going to rush forward the, the legislation to mm. make this, uh, to, to ban it, to make it illegal. But they haven't done that yet. No, it, it, it's all talk. And, it's all and talk. And so what? The list is out there. That's, that's, well, that's the it. joke. The so what? There. You can have all the laws you want. The, the dirty deed is done. And mm -hmm. the, the thing that, again, I, I find most farcical about it, they call themselves the Australian Human Rights Commission. They're into the human rights of some Australians, mm. not all. Yes, yes, good point. Well, it's been two years since Brisbane won the rights to the 2032 Olympic mm. Games, but it seems like they're only realising now that they're actually going to do a, have to do a budget for these yes. Olympics, Jason. There mm. doesn't seem to be any plan to build the infrastructure and no proper costings. Mm. There's few people in Australia that know one or two things about Olympic Games. I'm surprised they haven't been given the call up to just head a few hundred k's north of the border and have a conversation with, with the, the, the government in Queensland. The people in Sydney know how it works and we didn't have as much time as Brisbane in Sydney has had Warning. Brisbane got very early warning. They've blown two years. They could be well ahead on all of this. And they're now pretty much at what Sydney got as warning time for the Olympic Games. And Sydney pulled it off with magnificent venues, but a hell of a lot of money and a lot of public will and spirit. And the government's job up there is to maintain public will and spirit as much as it is to find it. And I reckon if you went down the street in Brisbane and asked people, do you want the, the Olympic Games? Plenty of people would say no. That's wrong because it will be a tremendous thing for this city and it will be great for the country and it will be fantastic for the spirit of the country. And, you know, I, I can't believe we're umming and ahhing about this. I really can't. Even in tough times, we'll find the money for this because it's important. Yeah. I mean, I just remember the excitement when Antonio Samaranch announced oh, right. that Sydney was the winner of the Olympic Games and, you know, everyone stayed up till four in the morning to watch the announcement. You say it, I get chills thinking about it because it, it was an amazing moment. Night. We amazing all went moment. down to Circular Key at yep. four in the morning. There was, yeah. there was such amazing... 
atmosphere. Yeah. It's an eco, but, yeah. but in this instance, I mean, there's even talk about cancelling the games. <laughs> Crazy. And, and they're ignoring the independent <laughs> review's recommendations. Yeah. I mean, you just... Queensland Premier Stephen Miles is nowhere on this. He is no well. He's been nowhere for a long time. Let's be honest, Stephen Giggling Miles. But I just wonder who exactly is he getting the advice from? If he's not taking on board the independent recommendations to try and cut the costs here, who is he trying to appease? His union mates? Is that the problem here? But we saw what happened, of course, when Victoria, for example, cancelled the Commonwealth Games. And now, if Brisbane, if Queensland was to do the same with the Olympic Games. We would look like a farce on the world stage. We would never be trusted again to be able to hold such prestigious events. We would be the laughing stock of the world if we are already not. And I do agree with you, Jason. I think you asked Queenslanders, would they want the Games? Probably not. There are a lot of disadvantages to, yeah. to, the, to the Games. Do you know, that's why I reckon he's umming and ahhing about it. Yeah. Because he's just a jockey who looks at opinion polls. I mean, Correct. the, blo the bloke's that's never right. done a thing in his life that anyone's yeah. ever wanted. Yeah. So his entire thing is about re-election. Yeah. And the by-election over the weekend proved that. He's vacillating on what the opinion polls are saying, so he thinks there could be votes in sort of suggesting maybe just, we walk away all from All right, it. just quickly before we get to the break, let's have a look at uh, what's happening with the Royals. Uh, it seems that yeah. there are three staff members now at a London hospital Amazing. under investigation for the leak Amazing. of medical information relating mm. to Princess Kate. Uh, Jason, what do you think should happen here? Sack them. That's <laughs> appalling. That is utterly appalling. Uh, I mean, the, frankly, the whole... Story is appalling. The whole coverage of this is appalling. The lady has been sick. There's a constitutional obligation for them to inform the government if there's a problem. That if there was a problem, the government would know. And a, a photoshopped photograph that was done badly and explained. I mean, I'm sorry, people, I'm naive in thinking this, and I know it's great to think there's a big tinfoil plot going on here. <laughs> but, the, you know... It, it could be just as it seems. It could be just as it seems. And I saw a comment yesterday online from the great cricketer Kevin Peterson, mm. who who knows this couple and who lives in the area of Windsor, and he says he sees them out all the time. Now, I mean, no one's paying him to say this. He's just a yeah. you know a poppy cricketer. Well, you know what? We need, to, we need to leave these people. Like, I feel so sorry for Kate. Imagine having your medical records breached. Oh, that is an appalling. Gross. That is an appalling. It's just it's disgusting. I can't even think of it. Mm. But you're right. They've gone down the foil hat route. My favourite from this week was the one where they said Diana's still alive and Kate's gone to live with Diana. Oh, jeez. That was, that was the best. Apparently right. the Paddington thing wasn't real either with the oh, Queen. You know, I mean, apparently. Paddington <laughs> uh, Jason Morrison, Danica DeJoy. Thanks. Thanks. Great to see you yeah. guys again.